Welcome into Warchant One on One. This is Ira Schofeld, managing editor of Warchant.com. And I'm joined today by a very special guest, Brooke Wyckoff, who's the interim head women's basketball coach for the Florida State Seminoles. Some of you may, rem may remember Coach from her playing days with the Seminoles when she was a star forward uh, for Florida State, but has been on the coaching staff for the last 10 years and for the last few months is the interim head women's basketball coach. So thanks for joining me, Coach. How are you doing? I'm great, Ira. Thanks so much for having me. It's good to see you. Yeah, great to see you again. Um, so FSU made the announcement in early September that you were going to take over as the interim head coach for Coach Semerow. Uh, Sue Semerow, of course, has built Florida State from one of the you know, lower tier teams in the ACC, honestly, to one of the preeminent programs in all of college basketball. And uh, so not only were you taking it over for a friend and, a, and, a, and, a, and your head coach, but also for a legend. Yeah. Um, what were those – how long did those conversations go on? And, and, uh, and I know that Coach Semerow is taking time to spend time with her mother who's um, dealing with an illness, but sounds like things are going better there. But um, what, how long did those conversations go on? Was it weeks, days, months? Uh, and what was that process like for you? Yeah, well, um, we found out the news in, in towards the end of, of basketball season or what we what was the end of our basketball season last year. Yeah. Um, and obviously it was kept very quiet and private. And, and then as COVID happened and we kind of started to realize the, the landscape that we were in and, and just all of the uncertainty of not only day-to-day -day life during a pandemic, but what that would mean for our basketball program, our basketball season. And, and really, you know, it's like, we didn't know, we didn't know what to expect that when that became clear of, man, this could go a million different ways. Um, and just the severity of the pandemic. And, and then also that along with, you know, Coach Sue's mom's treatment and things like that. Over the, the course of the summer is when we started to talk more and more seriously about possibly, uh, you know, going through with this and, and Sue stepping away for the year. So by the end of end of, of the summer in September, when the announcement finally came out, I was fully prepared. We had talked through every scenario um, and we felt really good about the decision and, and that it was the right thing to do first and foremost for coach Sue and her family. Yeah. And they, uh, and coach Sue's parents have been coming to games for years. They're kind of a mainstay. They would come in the post-game press conferences and you know, <laughs> really so supportive. So I know it's a very close family and you're a part of their family. Um, so you've been 10 years on nine or 10 years now on coach yeah. Semerow's staff um, after your obviously celebrated playing career. And then in the WNBA, um, how different is it being a head coach? I know a lot of head coaches will say you, you never really know what it's like until you sit in that chair. Right. Um, how, how different has it been? It's been, uh, yes, obviously it's different in terms of, you know, it's all now on, on my shoulders in terms of the ultimate responsibility of, of the overall big picture, but also, you know, the day-to-day -day direction that we're going in. It's, it's, up to me to kind of navigate that and be out in front of that. Um, but honestly, I, you know, I say this so much that I'm just so fortunate to have been able to step into this situation, not just because of the opportunity to, to try out being a head coach, but just because of the, the foundation that's been laid. I mean, I couldn't have asked for a more perfect situation, more familiar situation um, to step into with our players, with the staff, with the athletic department, with Florida State as a whole, the community being known. Um, Coach Sue setting just an amazing example over the last 20 years of, of how we do things here. And so, you know, knowing that um, has made this this job or this transition way easier than than many other coach first time head coaches have it. And so I'm blessed in that regard. But yeah, it, it is. It, it's you know the the typical what you would think of just you know when we win it's it's amazing when we lose. Hey, you know who's got to figure it out? <laughs> this one. <laughs> Luckily, too, I, I have Coach Sue there by my side, and and as a mentor and giving advice and a listening ear, which is also you know a huge blessing. How does that work? I mean, are are you? I mean, I'm sure she's paying very close attention, especially now that it sounds like her mother's doing better. Or there's encouraging news there. Is are you calling her? frequently is she calling you are you guys on FaceTime all the time how, how, how's that going <laughs> it's both it's both it's definitely a, a two-way a two-sided communication um pattern of just you know she at first I'll say she's been amazing just allowing me room to to figure it out and to to take ownership and 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 lead without her you know 
her presence, you know, she's done a really good job. And I can't imagine how difficult that must be for her after, you know, building this thing and now watching, <laughs> having to watch her from the sidelines. Well, you know, someone else takes the reins, but she's been great with that. But she has, she's just, she's there for me uh, with a piece of advice here and there nothing basketball related, which, you know, she, it's more just mentoring me as a head coach, you know, giving that insight that she has that, um, really only she understands and uh, in terms of Florida state basketball. And, um, and so, yes, I reach out to her, she reaches out to me and, uh, but it's been a really nice back and forth. And again, just a great support for me, um, in all the best ways. But but nobody could have been prepared for this season, um, obviously, you know, with COVID. Right. And, and so your, 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 uh, your first season as a head coach is getting to deal with uh, yeah. an unprecedented experience. Uh, looking at men's and women's college basketball, it just seems like there's no predictability in terms of like not just when teams can play. I know your guys' schedule has been changed around a million times, but like how teams play from week to week. I mean, you're see, yeah. you'll see one team, you know, I know – you know, you guys lost Wake Forest. They almost beat Louisville, but they got yeah. drugged by Georgia Tech. And it's just like every team seen in, in right. both the, the women's and men's, it seems like it's so up and down. Is that because of what you guys are dealing with, you think? I think so. It, you know, and it, you never really understood. I mean, in theory, it makes sense. Like, okay, we have all these non-conference games and you play some cupcake teams, you play some hard teams, you have a, a preseason scrimmage, um, you know, a closed scrimmage, you have an exhibition game against a D2 team. And so you, you do use that time um, and know that you're preparing for uh, the ACC season conference play, but we've never really seen what life is like without that, without that big lead up. And I think for sure, like you said, just the unpredictability of the season um, may contribute to that just lack of consistency for teams, but also just the shortened season teams getting to, you know, work those kinks out, understand who they are as a basketball team, understand, you know, and coaches understanding that and the rhythm uh, we're all just still figuring it out in this shortened season. And so you see it in a way, it's kind of fun. Like, wow, you know, things are changing all the time in terms of anyone can beat anyone. And if you have a bad night, it's like, well, hey, we've got another opportunity. Let's go see what happens next. <laughs> you know, nothing's, <laughs> you know, so that's been interesting. But um, yeah, that that non-conference lead up and, and just it is huge. I mean, we're here in February and you guys have, you guys have only played like 11 games, right? Yeah, yeah. And not be uh, not because of, you know, you guys not being able to play a lot of times your opponents have had yes, to, to stop exactly. playing. So. Exactly. Uh, I want to go back with your relationship with coach um, Semerow. And, and I know your first season as a player at Florida state was in 1997 with coach Semerow's first season as well, even though she didn't recruit you. Um, what was, first of all, how did Florida state find you in Ohio? Why did you choose Florida State? What was your recruitment like? I don't think I've really ever talked to you about this part of your career. Yeah, it, it, it is a nutso story. And just thinking back on it and now being a college coach, I'm like, I would have hated myself as a college recruit. Like I would not, I would have been so mad at me. And I made a lot of coaches mad back. It, the thing was, is that my parents, and this this is such a great lesson for, for us now, for me now, is like my parents and the people around me didn't have a lot of idea about how recruiting works, you know? So I was just receiving all this, these phone calls and, and interest and offers. And it was like, I'm a 16, 15 year old kid that doesn't know what I want or how to say no to anybody. So um, we tell the story all the time. Like this is when, you, you know, we can do home visits in September of your senior year. Um, so I had 21 home visits in, in September of my senior year, like unheard of ridiculous. I, I just can't even, I'm embarrassed. Well, to in, say it. in your defense though, recruiting was so different back then. Cause it was really, the internet was just kind of taking off. So people weren't as knowledgeable, like recruits. Now they know everything about the business. So you guys, it was, it wasn't unusual probably to be a little bit, you know, unaware. Right in the dark clueless. Like, I mean, the fact that, you know, so, I, so, and I was playing volleyball. So it was just, it was, I was playing volleyball. I was having these college coaches in my house, you know, every, my parents were going nuts. Like, what did you do? But all that to say, when I, when Florida state and got, I, I honestly don't know how they got on 
a list of visit. It was just like another person, you know, and I don't know, they saw me, an assistant saw me at like one of these national camps I'd been invited to, you know, so that's how they saw me. But anyway, something about their staff. And again, it wasn't the same staff that Sue had, but it was, there was something about them that just grabbed hold. Um, and it was the people thing. It, it was crazy enough. And so um, it, it was a mess going forward, but I just, at the end of the day, felt like they wanted me, they wanted to, to build around me. Um, they, they cared about me as a person and as a basketball player. And, and I said, well, okay, let's go down to Florida. And it didn't, it didn't, it didn't hurt that they were like the furthest away from home. I wanted to get the heck out of I understand that. suburbia. <laughs> so. I understand that as a, as, a, as a father of a daughter who couldn't wait to get out of get out of the house to go to college. I, I certainly understand that. Yeah, but, I know. It's sad. Well, uh, well, and so I, and I, I've never talked to you about that. I've talked to coach Sue about this, but when yeah. my first job out of college was covering uh, high schools in Thomasville, Georgia, and oh. I covered Lakeisha Springle. Oh my gosh. And, yeah. she, and I covered her carrying her high school to state championships and yeah. unbelievable player. One of the best competitors I'd ever seen. Yeah. Um, and she played here with you at Florida yes. State. And I, and I remember when she was about maybe five, two, five, three. <laughs> she was little. Yeah. And, uh, but just tough and athletic. And I remember yeah. asking Coach Sue, uh, this is probably, I don't know, mid 2000s. And I was like, you know, could, could Lakeisha play at Florida State now? And she just kind of gave me a look like <laughs> a little different program than it was at that time. But I mean, isn't it amazing how far the program has come? I mean, the idea of, I mean, now your guards are six feet tall. And I mean, yeah. it's just, it's, it's, you know, you guys are recruiting against the best of the best and playing with the best of the best. It's how different is it? Do you ever reflect on how different it is when, when you were a player? So much. And, you know, it's so funny. I, I, I just received in the mail yesterday from a custodian at my old high school who had found this old, like, it must have been like a memorabilia from my senior season at Lakota at my high school. It, and it had like stats and articles. And one of the articles was about me going to Florida state. And one of the quotes, and I sent it to Sue yesterday was um, I want to go down to Florida state and improve as a basketball player and also help Florida state women's basketball, get the respect earn you know, earn respect mm -hmm. as a program. Don't remember saying that, nothing, but that I, I literally, and I'm like, I'm reading this going, wow. And just to think like, exactly like you said, how far we've come and how this program now does have respect in our community, nationally, uh, we recruit the best of the best, all of that. It's been such a cool journey um, to have been on from day one. And, and, you know, coach Sue was the one driving that the whole time. When you, you, uh... So you played several years in the WNBA at that, at that point, were you thinking about getting into coaching or how did you decide to get into coaching? And I know you, I think yeah. you went originally into high school coaching and then end up uh, moving yes. on to the college game. How did that, how did that process work? Well, I didn't, I don't remember ever wanting to be a coach. Although in that same article, I just, I just mentioned, I said, I want to be an English high school teacher and possibly coach. I don't remember wanting that. I certainly, by the time I got to the WNBA, I was obviously enjoying playing, but thought, I'd move on, you know, away from basketball into who knows what, maybe teaching and just, at, or sales. I don't, who knows, but um, I was young and, and stupid still and thought I, <laughs> when I retired at 29 from basketball, from playing, um, I was searching and I got involved with my youngest sister's high school varsity team um, and just as a volunteer and fell in love with it and was just helping out while I was searching for whatever else I was going to do and ended up being with that program for two seasons. And then Sue called and said, Hey, are you interested in college coaching? I had no idea. She was talking about Florida state or anything. I was like, you know what? I never thought about it, but yeah, I think I might be, you know, and she's like, let's talk, let's chat. And then she, you know, there was a, yeah. there was a, Corey Close had just left and she, and she's like, I just can't get your name off my mind. And I'm like, okay. And then the rest is literally history. I, it's, it really was the, the most perfect fit. What I've been preparing my whole life for, you know, basketball, why would I ever want to walk away from it? It's right. what I knew best. It's been great. <laughs> yeah, definitely seemed to have uh, been a natural at it because you guys have had so much success. Um, Coach Sue had success before you took join the staff, but obviously you guys have kind of gone to another level. Uh, the the Momsen coaching program yeah. that you 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 
I guess founded or co-founded um, after you had your daughter, you know, I was reading one of the articles about you starting that organization and, and uh, really hit it home to me. And I'm sure it would hit home to a lot of uh, other parents because, you know, when you have children, I know my wife and I, when we first had our first daughter 20 years ago, we, we thought she would just go right back to work and, you know, and, and just move, keep going with life. And then, yeah. and then you realize that um, it's hard to leave your child and go to work and it's hard for, um, so my wife really had a hard time with that. We had to handle it uh, our way, but the way you've been able to do it is you kind of form this support group uh, through coaching, which didn't exist before moms and coaching. And I was wondering if you could tell us about that and your, your beautiful daughter and uh, kind of how that changed your life and how you decided to start that organization. Well, yeah, well, thanks for asking about it. It's something that's obviously very near and dear to my heart and, and something that I'm really blessed to uh, be a part of, not just have founded, but literally I started it because I needed that support. I needed to have that that group of, of women around me that were doing, that were coaching and, and parenting at the same time. And, um, and as we all know, any parent in any situation, it's just, it's uncharted waters, you know, it, it's, it's something different every day. Everybody's experience is different, but when you have people that, um, whether they're just parents as well, other parents, but also, you know, understand the day-to-day -day demands of your job, um, and, and it, it helps so much. And so that's why I originally started it was I looked around and all these women that were coming out of the woodwork to congratulate me on my pregnancy and, and encourage me. And I'm like, wait, you have kids. I, I didn't know that. <laughs> like you have three kids. What? Uh, cause we just see each other recruiting and, and, and coaching and kids aren't around. So that's how it started as a support group. And then um, really now it, it, it's still that, of course, but just uh, thinking back to where I was when I was a player or when I was coming a younger before I was a, what became pregnant was I didn't really think or, or that it could be done. You know, you don't really imagine or you think, wow, that's got to be really hard. So mm, I'm not sure if when I want kids or I'm really focused on my career right now, or, you know, or if I did, or obviously other women that want kids think I can't do both. So just to, to be that, um, to embody that and publicly showing that there are all these women um, who are members of our group, moms and coaching that are doing it and encouraging younger women um, to think about it, to consider it, to, you know, stay in coaching and have a family. Uh, we need women to stay in coaching uh, on both both sides of men and women's basketball. And um, and so, you know, we don't want just the fact that, oh, I need to have a family. I need to stay home. Um, if that's if that's what they want to do, that's fine. But just knowing that there are people out there doing it, doing it and uh, doing both really well. And it's it's really grown. Right. I mean, you you guys started. It was very just to, you know, yeah. just started it from nothing. And all of a sudden now it's it's a big organization. Right. Yeah. I mean, there's no shortage of, of women, uh, having babies, you know, and, and so <laughs> honestly, and, and, and there are, there's so many coaches, obviously it's not just the D one level. We try to involve anywhere, any coaches, um, and also in, in men's basketball as well, uh, that women that are coaching men's basketball, uh, you know, so yeah, it's, it's been really cool just to see the interest level and also just hear the stories of women who have kids from all different age groups and walks of life and, uh, career situations. So you, uh, I think you guys have, um, six games left and five of them are at home, uh, which mm -hmm. is, you know, unless something else gets rescheduled, which, um, yes. I guess is possible, but, um, so that's gotta be exciting. I, you're, you guys are undefeated at home, I believe. <laughs> Uh, this season. So uh, what are you looking forward to and closing the season and kind of getting ready for your first postseason? Yeah, well, that's, that's the goal is just to, to get us ready to, to be able to um, hopefully make the NCAA tournament. And, you know, we got a lot of work to do um, leading up to that, but we do have a really good opportunity. Now we're at home um, and we're, you know, now we're deep enough into the ACC where we kind of understand what this is all about. You know, we've, we've learned some lessons, uh, a lot of good lessons through wins and through losses. Um, and now, you know, like you said, we have 11 games under our belt, which <laughs> isn't very many, but um, you know, enough to, to really understand more and more who we are and, and what we need to focus on. So we're excited for this month coming up and we'll see if we can, you know, make a push and, and be 
do well enough to make the NCAA tournament. That's the goal. Awesome. Well, good luck with it. Thanks for your time, coach. I appreciate it. And uh, best of luck with that. And uh, looking forward to seeing you and coach Sue and the rest of the team down the road. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Ira.